Hey guys, once again welcome to our channel. Hopefully you guys are doing great. In today's video, we will be dealing with a new concept and that as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail, we are going to deal with Ionic Radius. Yeah, it's the continuation of our previous part basically. Uh, that's, that was the Atomic Radius. So without wasting our precious time, let's just jump directly into the topic. Alright, so ionic radius. So generally, what do we mean by an ionic radius? Um, in our previous video, when we, when we were talking about atomic radius, we discussed that atomic radius is the measure of the size of an atom and how is it measured. Now ionic radius, as simple as that. So ionic radius is basically of an element is the measure of the size of an ion. Okay, and likewise, Ionic, radii, ionic radii also shows predictable patterns across the periodic table. So how it is? Now the difference is that when we were talking about atomic, atomic radius, we were um, basically speaking about that atomic radius, they decrease across each period, they generally decrease on, down each group. All right. So this was the uh, theory that you were taking. All right. Now, if you talk about ionic radius, there is something different. So ionic radii show predictable patterns, but what happens, but in what context? So ionic radii increase with increasing negative charge and ionic radii decrease with increasing positive charge. So this is the difference that I'm talking about. Now these trends can also be explained by the electron shell theory. So let's just have a look at that. <clears throat> so here comes the first. Now ions, if you talk about the negative charge, considering the situation of the negative charge, all right, where ionic radii is increasing. Now ions with negative charges are formed by atoms accepting extra electrons while the nuclear charge remains the same. This, to be, this has to be familiar with you that whenever negatively charged ions are formed, this means they are accepting electrons, not donating, all right? And what happens in, after that? The outermost electrons are further away from that positively charged nucleus and therefore held only weakly to the nucleus which increases the ionic radius. Now these two points have a connection and have and they are linked to each other and they have something to do with shielding. All right. Now what happens when these negatively charged ions are they are accepting extra electrons while the nuclear charge remains the same. This means that this means that the shielding is increasing. How the shielding is increasing? Because you are accepting extra electrons and those extra electrons will try to repel, are, they, are basically rep they are mainly repelling the electrons in the inner shell. So there's some sort of shielding is happening there. Now the outermost electrons are further away from the positively charged nucleus and therefore held only weakly to the nucleus which increases the ionic radius. Now this statement might confuse you because we are talking about the increment in nuclear charge. That means if you might be thinking, you might be wondering that um, that the increase in nuclear charge means that um, the nucleus is strongly attracting, there is a greater nuclear attraction, but now that's, that's not the case because the atom, because the ion is accepting extra electron, all right? It's accepting extra electron, so there's some sort of shielding is happening which will weaken the nuclear attraction and hence it will increase the ionic radius. And from this, we can deduce that the greater the negative charge, the larger the ionic radius. Moving on to the positively charged ions, in the case in which the ionic radii decrease. Now positively charged ions, we know that they are formed by atoms losing electrons. And what happens? The nuclear charge will remain the same. Okay, but compared to our negative charges, now there are fewer electrons which undergo a greater electrostatic force of attraction to the nucleus, which will decrease the which will decrease the ionic radius. So that what happens that these positively charged ions they are losing electrons. This means now the nuclear charge is dealing with fewer electrons, and there will be a greater electrostatic force of attraction to the nucleus, and hence it will decrease the ionic radius. So we can deduce a theory that the greater the positive charge, the smaller the ionic radius. Now let me just show you something. So here's a diagrammatic snapshot of how it looks like. We are not basically talking about groups and periods, we're just talking about 
negative and positive charge. That's it. Now let me just take my one second. Yeah, all right. Now here you can see. Now there is one confusion that students like. Uh, there's a slight confusion here. So if you see, there's no confusion in positive charges, but some people might confuse in the negative charges. So that's, we are going to clear it now. So if you see lithium has a charge of plus one, so it has the smallest ionic radius, okay? The, uh, no, no, it has a greater ionic radius. And if you go to the beryllium, it has a charge of two plus. And we know that the greater the positive charge, the smaller the ionic radius, it gets smaller. Going to boron, it has three plus, that will get more small. So here we are applying the theory, all right? And the negative charges, some people might think that F minus is bigger compared to O2 minus, and some people might think that O2 minus is bigger compared to F minus. So out of those options, the uh, the second option will be, second option is correct. Because when we are saying that, it says the greater the negative charge, the smaller the ionic radius. So we just, we are talking about the number. Look at the number of the negative charge. Look at the coefficient of that. So that means uh, that O has a coefficient of two and F has a coefficient of one. Okay, it's one minus, two minus. So this means oxygen has to be greater. So oxygen has to be, has a larger ionic radius compared to F minus. It has a smaller ionic radius. Same goes for S and Cl, Se and Br and Te and I. And these are the trends in the ionic radii across the period and down a group. So that's it for today's video. I hope, I hope you have uh, benefited from this lecture. Um, this may, just make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. That's very important for me and for my viewers. Um, hit the like button, comment down below, share this video with your fellow friends so they can also understand what do we mean by atomic and ionic radius. That's it. Cheers.